Hi, everybody. Last time we were together, I said that I would tell you about Anton von Leeuwenhoek today. I plan to do that, but first I want to tell you a story about me. When I was about your age, one day my father came home with a present for me under his arm. When I first opened it, I wasn't sure what it was. It looked like this. Do you know what this is called or what it does? My father explained that it was a microscope. That was nothing I had ever dreamed of wanting. I spent most of my time playing outside and could barely sit still to read a book. Why would I want this funny-looking instrument? You are so curious about everything. I thought perhaps you'd like to see what a butterfly wing or a bug looks like close up, my father said. I peered through the lens or the curved piece of magnifying glass of the microscope and saw the tiny veins and hairs of an insect. I looked at the insect's eyes and at blades of grass. I looked at oak leaves and dead bumblebees and toy soldiers. It was the best present I had ever received. Have you ever used a magnifying glass? A magnifying glass magnifies objects. It makes objects look hundreds of times larger than they really are. It shows things that are too small to see with the human eye alone. Sometimes people use magnifying glasses to read really small print or to find splinters buried deep in the skin. Well, a microscope is a lot like that, but much more powerful. So what does that have to do with Anton von Leeuwenhoek? Well, just like me at seven years old, the year I received my first microscope, Anton was very curious. He also had a fascination with magnifying objects. Although Anton was not a scientist, his work with microscopes changed the way people thought about the human body and how it works. At 16, Anton began working in the textile or cloth business. His shop sold cloth, buttons, sewing supplies, ribbons, and lace. His customers were very particular, expecting the very best textiles or cloth for their suits and dresses. Anton used a magnifying glass to make sure the threads of the cloth were straight and tightly woven. His customers appreciated Anton's careful observations. Observations are made when you look closely at the details of something. When he was about 30 years old, Anton took a trip from his home in Holland to nearby England. There he discovered a book called Micrographia, meaning small images. Written by Robert Hooke, the book was full of drawings and descriptions of objects seen through a microscope. Anton was fascinated by how large and detailed the micro, or small, objects looked when seen through the lenses of a microscope. It was a little like someone with poor eyesight putting on eyeglass lenses for the first time and discovering that the blurry tree in the distance was actually made up of individual leaves. He couldn't wait to get home to experiment with his own objects. Upon his return to Holland, Anton began to build his own single-lens microscopes, or a type of microscope having only one lens. He shaped his lenses very carefully, grinding them down with sand and polishing them smooth with putty or polishing powder. Anton's simple microscopes magnified objects from 50 to 200 times their natural size. Anton had been interested in science and nature ever since he was a boy, and now he had the opportunity to study nature at a much closer range. He carried squiggly, worm-like insect larvae around in his pocket, eager to watch the entire life cycles of insects with the aid of a microscope. Using the microscopes he made himself, he studied people's skin, mosquito wings, and sheep hairs. He observed duck hearts, fish scales, cow eyes, and water bugs. 
What a strange man, others thought. But this patient man was driven by his curiosity, and he wanted to learn more. He never lost interest in the scales on a gnat's wing or the hairs on a fly. He looked at the same things again and again, comparing, measuring, and recording his findings. Anton conducted many experiments with water, drinking water from his well, water from lakes, and from the sea, rain, and melted snow. He discovered what looked to him like tiny little animals in lake water. He called these little animals animalcules. Anton claimed he saw even more animalcules swimming about in rainwater. They were everywhere, he said. He estimated, or made an educated guess, that 1,000 of these tiny creatures could fit on the head of a pin. People called him a liar and a magician, some thinking him quite mad or crazy. But in fact, Anton was not mad at all. His little animals were not really animals, but they were definitely alive. He was the first to observe and describe many tiny living things in nature not visible with the naked eye, including bacteria or germs. In other words, bacteria cannot be seen with the naked eye. When something cannot be seen with the naked eye, it means you can't see the object with just your eyes. You need a tool, such as a microscope, telescope, or magnifying glass in order to see it. Many scientists believe that these tiny life forms have been on Earth for more than three billion years. They surround us in air, water, and on land, but no one was aware of their existence before Anton recorded what he saw. He discovered a whole new world. Ever curious, Anton began studying the saliva from inside his mouth. He discovered even more bacteria. He found that the sticky coating on the outside of his teeth was crawling with millions of tiny organisms or living things. You have them too, but don't worry, they won't hurt you. In fact, many of them help you. We'll learn more about them another day. Anton kept a journal to record his detailed observations. He made friends with two English doctors who belonged to England's Royal Society of London. They told him that their fellow English scientists kept similar journals to share their scientific discoveries, and they invited Anton to share his work with them. So for the next 50 years, Anton sent hundreds of letters to England. His letters described in great detail the tiny structures that he saw through his homemade microscopes. He described fungus on stale bread, the stingers, eyes, and mouths of bees, even tiny lice. Because he could not draw well, Anton hired someone to illustrate his writing. The English society loved everything he sent and published his letters for others to read. Anton von Leeuwenhoek did not invent the microscope, nor was he the first to use one. But he used his own simple microscope more than most people of his day. Compared to modern microscopes, Anton's was very simple indeed. It was even more simple than other microscopes used in his day. The entire instrument was only three to four inches long and had to be held up close to the eye. Anton's microscope used only one lens. Modern microscopes have two or more lenses, one in the eyepiece that you look through, and at least one lens at the bottom of the tube or barrel to enlarge things even more. Today, objects are put on glass slides to be viewed. These objects remain in one place. It is the lens that moves, not the objects. Instead of keeping the objects in one place, Anton mounted his objects on the end of a sharp pointed pin sticking up in front of the lens and moved the objects instead of the lens. Anton's invention required good lighting and great patience to use. His lenses were the clearest and most powerful lenses of his day, 
but he never shared his secret for creating them. No one came close to matching the quality of Anton von Leeuwenhoek's microscopes for more than a hundred years after his death. Of the four to five hundred microscopes that Anton is believed to have made, no more than nine exist today. Anton is my hero because he was the first person to describe bacteria, tiny living things not visible with the naked eye. And his discovery of bacteria made it possible to see other small living things, such as the small building blocks of all life on Earth. As a nutritionist, I am fascinated by how the human body works and the tiny building blocks that make up the human body. The next time we meet, I look forward to teaching you about the amazing body's amazing building blocks.